What are the signs and symptoms of acute pancreatitis? If you're wondering how in the world you can remember them all in nursing school, stick around because I am going to give you a super easy breakdown of them so that you don't need to worry over your med surg exams. I will be giving you all of the critical thinking behind it so it's basically like I'm giving you all of the answers. <laughs> so stick around because it just might show up on your nursing school exam. Hey there friend, Christina here and welcome to the nursing school show. I am here to help you pass nursing school and become an amazing nurse. So if you want to rock nursing school without totally losing your mind, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. When you hear the term pancreatitis, the first thing that should come to your mind is inflammation of the pancreas. That's all that it means. The pancreas is inflamed and it can't do its job as well. Acute pancreatitis fair, happens fairly suddenly and doesn't usually cause long-term damage. However, if there are multiple acute attacks of pancreatitis, then it can lead to chronic pancreatitis, which is more of a slow and steady inflammation and can lead to permanent damage of the pancreas. Now, anytime you study a med surge disorder like acute pancre pancreatitis, you always need to learn the pathophysiology first. And here's why. The pathophysiology tells you what's happening with the disorder in the body. What is actually going on with it? And then the signs and symptoms of that disorder stem from that underlying cause. So instead of just memorizing a list of signs and symptoms, which is not helpful for you when it comes to exam time, I'll tell you why in a second, you will connect the signs and symptoms all back to the underlying pathophysiology and actually be able to critically think about it. I know it can be tempting to just make some flashcards and memorize everything without actually understanding it, but if you've been in nursing school for like two seconds, you know that you are never tested on memorization, right? You're tested on critical thinking skills and how to apply the information you learned. So that's what we focus on. And do not worry, I'm going to give you all of the answers here in this video. Now, if you've been around for a little while, you know that I always like to put things into super simple step-by-step -step processes to help you learn it faster. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of acute pancreatitis, the path the physiology for it, but please know that these aren't official steps or anything. I just put them together in this way to help you learn it easier and faster. I think they are super helpful. So let's do it. Now, the first step is that there is a trigger that activates pancreatic enzymes. The two major causes of acute pancreatitis are alcohol use and gallstones. Now, normally the pancreas is responsible for releasing enzymes that help you digest your food. These enzymes are in active when they're inside the pancreas. They leave the pancreas and are then activated to help break down all of that food. But alcohol can trigger these enzymes to activate too quickly when they're still inside the pancreas. Now the same process happens with gallstones. There's a blockage, so the pancreatic enzymes, they can't leave and they get activated while they're still inside the pancreas. After these enzymes have been triggered, they begin to eat and break down the tissue inside of the pancreas. Now this is called autodigestion. The pancreas is literally eating itself. And this leads us to step number three of the pathophysiology of acute pancreatitis, where there is an inflammatory response that is triggered, leading to inflammation and swelling in the pancreas, and then further tissue damage inside the pancreas. And then finally, step number four is complications. If the inflammation and edema persists and is severe enough, it can lead to pancreatic tissue death, which is called necrosis and then acute kidney injury. Now blood flow will be reduced to the kidneys due to all that swelling leading to possible kidney injury. Now it's also possible for GI contents to spill out into the bloodstream. And if those pancreatic 
enzymes wear away at the digestive tract, it can cause small holes in the bowel, holes for bowel contents to then leak out, and that could lead to sepsis. So the key point to remember is this, when you think of pancreatitis, the first thing that should come to your mind is inflammation of the pancreas. The pancreas is inflamed, it's swollen and unhappy, so it cannot function as well. So keep this pathophysiology of acute pancreatitis in mind as we go through the signs and symptoms here, because remember, the pathophysiology is what drives the signs and symptoms. So you must understand the pathophysiology physiology of acute pancreatitis first before you can understand the signs and symptoms. So here's a list of the signs and symptoms that may occur because of acute pancreatitis. Now, don't freak out. I know this is a long list. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll walk you through the signs and symptoms of acute pancreatitis along with why they happen so that you can understand the critical thinking behind it and get questions about it right on your exams. And if you are a nursing SOS member, head on over to your dashboard and print out the pancreatitis study guide that we have for you. Now we've also got an entire pancreatitis video series in there for you as well, covering the nursing assessment and the nursing interventions. So be sure to check that out. Now, there are two main issues here with acute pancreatitis that you need to know. Now, first, the pancreas is damaged and it isn't able to release its normal digestive enzymes like it normally does. They're stuck inside the pancreas. And then second, the pancreas may not ab be able to regulate insulin production like it normally does either. So the main symptoms you'll see in a patient with pancreatitis will stem from one of these two issues, not enough digestive, digestive enzymes and imbalanced insulin production. Now the first symptom you might notice is abdominal pain that is mainly located in the upper quadrants of the abdomen and then radiates to the back. It may be worse when the patient is laying down. Now the pain is usually worse after eating because the stomach is requiring the pancreas to release the digestive enzymes and insulin to help regulate blood sugar and digest the ingested food, but it's not able to, which then can lead to pain. Nausea and vomiting may accompany the abdominal pain and the abdo abdomen may be tender, especially in the left upper quadrant. Now the patient may also have decreased bowel sounds because of all that swelling, all the inflammation, along with the decrease in digestive enzymes. Now the bowels could stall out, possibly leading to an ileus where the GI tract cannot move contents forward. It just all sits there in the bowels. Now, since the pancreas can't release those digestive enzymes as well, they can just leak out into the blood vessels around the pancreas. So those digestive enzyme levels, namely lipase and amylase, will be elevated in the bloodstream. Along with that, their blood glucose level will be higher as well, since the insulin can't get into the bloodstream to help regulate and lower those blood sugar levels. Now, a fever, increased heart rate, and increased white blood cells are usually present as well because of all the inflammatory process happening inside the pancreas. And there are two signs of pancreatitis that you need to be aware of because the nursing schools love to test you on these, colon sign and gray turner sign. Now colon sign is bruising around the belly button and then gray turner sign or it's also called just Turner sign, is bruising on the patient's side, the flank areas. So colon sign is bruising around the belly button and Turner side sign is bruising here on the sides. Now these are caused by that leaking of digestive enzymes into the pancreas and then the surrounding tissues. Now those digestive enzymes literally break down the tissues causing bleeding. So here's the key point you must remember when learning the signs and symptoms of acute pancreatitis. There are two main issues. Remember, the pancreas is damaged, 
and it isn't able to release its normal digestive enzymes like it usually does. And number two, the pancreas may not be able to regulate ins insulin production like it normally does either. Now, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend and click on this med surge playlist right here so you can rock your med surge nursing class and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.